Hello everyone, welcome to Pediatrics and Neonatology. This video is about frostbite. Frostbite occurs when tissues freeze at sub-zero temperature. Predisposing factors include inadequate clothing or footwear, hypothermia, exhaustion, alcohol which impairs judgment, drugs for example beta blockers, peripheral vascular disease, smoking, or previous cold injury. Now, frostbite usually involve extremities, especially fingers, toes, nose, and ears. Now, frostbite occur in three stages. The first is frost nip. Frost nip may precede frostbite. The skin of the nose, face, or fingers goes white and numb, but recovers rapidly on protection from the cold. There may be transient paresthesias but no tissue loss and no permanent damage. Now the second stage is superficial frostbite. It involves skin and subcutaneous tissue. The frozen area is numb and looks white and waxy. Tissue feels firm or hard but are still pliable. Rewarming is painful. Edematous hyperemic skin become mottled or purple with serum filled blisters. A hard black asher forms and after 83 weeks, this separates, revealing sensitive red shiny skin. Third stage is deep frostbite. It involves muscles, nerve, and sometimes bone, as well as skin and superficial tissues. The damaged area is hard and remains gray or white after rewarming. Now, blood filled blisters may develop. Now, the dead tissues mummifies and separates after several weeks or months. Now the treatment of frostbite. This varies with the situation and facilities. Only frostnip should be treated in the field. Frostbitten tissue need rewarming as soon as possible, but further damage must be avoided. So it is better to walk out on frozen feet than on the partially thawed feet. Now treat hypothermia before frostbite. Rewarm the frostbitten limbs in water at 37 to 39 degrees centigrade until skin circulation returns and this usually occur in 8-30 minutes or 14 hours. Give analgesia and ibuprofen which inhibit prostaglandins. After rewarming, let the area dry in warm air and do not towel dry. Elevate the limb. Expose the area with a bed cradle to avoid pressure of the bed clothes. Clean the area daily in a whirlpool bath and encourage movement. If necessary, split asher to relieve stiffness. Now avoid surgical debridement and amputation. Allow the asher to separate spontaneously because premature surgery can cause avoidable tissue loss. Expert advice is helpful in severe frostbite. Bone scan or MRI or MRA may help to define deep tissue injury. In severe frostbite, early thrombolysis with tissue plasminogen activator may reduce the risk of eventual amputation. Now the prevention. Frostbite can be prevented. Here are some tips to help you stay safe and warm. Number one. Limit time outdoors in cold, wet, or windy weather. Number two, pay attention to weather forecast and wind chill readings. In very cold, windy weather, exposed skin can develop frostbite in matter of minutes. Then dress in several layers of loose, warm clothing. Air trapped between the layers of clothing act as an insulation against the cold. Then wear windproof and waterproof outer garments to protect against wind, snow, and rain. Next, choose undergarments that wick moisture away from the skin. Change out of wet clothing, particularly gloves, hats, and socks as soon as possible. Then wear a hat or headband that fully covers the ears. Heavy woolen or windproof materials make the best headwear for the cold protection. Now, next tip is wear mittens rather than gloves. Mittens provide better protection. 
or you can try a thin pair of glove liners which are made of a wicking material such as polypropylene under a pair of heavier gloves or mittens. Next, wear socks and sock liners that fit well, wick moisture and provide insulation. Now consider hand and foot warmer as well. Be sure foot warmers don't make boots too tight, restricting blood flow. Next, watch for the signs of frostbite. Early signs of frostbite include changes in the skin color, prickling and numbness. Seek warm shelter if you notice signs of frostbite. Then plan to protect yourself. When traveling in cold weather, carry emergency supplies and warm clothing in cases you become stranded. Now, if you will be in remote territory, tell others your route and expected return date. Another useful tip, don't drink alcohol if you plan to outdoors in cold weather because alcoholic beverages cause the body to lose heat faster. Then eat well-balanced meals and stay hydrated. Doing this even before you go out in the cold will help you stay warm. And the last, keep moving. Exercise can get the blood flowing and help you stay warm, but don't do it to the point of exhaustion. Now a few words about trench foot or immersion foot. It is caused by prolonged immersion in cold water or wet boots at temperature just above freezing. Vasoconstriction causes tissue ischemia and nerve damage. The feet are initially cold, numb and pale or mottled. On rewarming, they become red, swollen and very painful. And blisters may also develop. Now for treatment, keep the feet clean, warm and dry and elevate to reduce edema. Now most patients recover fully, but some have continued pain, paresthesias and sensitivity to cold. Ok friends, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more informative health videos.